All right, intermission time is over. Welcome back, Zero K fans, but you probably haven't left yet. Welcome me back, I guess. You can do that. So we're on Forever, Clone, Gulfrog, and Aquanim. And yep, they're okay. They're here. Yogstoth has not left, but they're here. So. Yeah, that's going to be... That is going to be interesting. Probably this roughly the same progression as last time, because last time we had, I mean, Skazi and Yogg-Sath, who were very macro-focused. So are Forever and Clone. Which means, of course, that Forever and Clone are going to be probably going for the CCR if they can, and otherwise they're going to be going for... Oh, Akam and Goofrog if they lose the first one. But, hmm, not sure what otherwise to expect. But I would say overall that it looks like, it looks like Akinu Goofrog have started to get into the swing of how to deal with this. So I expect that they're going to be quite tough competition for Forever and Clone, otherwise Forever and Clone are obviously going to have a free win. Goofrog and Akron can't deal with this. And Turnian, 12 by 12 map, but it's for three players. So this will be interesting. Ah, you're back. Welcome back, Kane. I'm back. Hey, guys. All right, so... Still waiting to load in here, it looks like. Yep, and our... Okay, it looks setting like, the shuffle option. Yeah, just double checking the Skazi and Aquanim and sorry, Skazi and Anarchid and Google for, sorry. Skazi, Aquanim, Snuggle Base, and Anarchid. Not Aquanim. Who's the other person? The the Yogstot, Skazi. Yeah, whatever. The losers semifinals is gonna be happening, or pre-finals rather, is happening as well. There is a room for that. Everything's good. Great. Except for my ability to think. <laughs> Oh, Anarchist, or Astro was pointing out that in a black hole, particles are squeezed together so tightly they can't move and thus are frozen. Ah, so it is cold. Honestly, I don't... No one knows, but the accretion disk is most likely to be very hot. That's a good point. But yeah, I would imagine the pressure at the center from all the gravity. But not that, not that I'm a, uh, anywhere familiar with the physics of black holes. People who study black holes aren't familiar with the physics of black holes. Black <laughs> holes are weird. So I hear Like, you basically, there's no easy way to figure out what's going on in a black hole because you can't know what's going on in a black hole. That's kind of the point. Nothing gets out. Wasn't that like a recent development? Didn't Hawking just publish some sort of theory that says that you can actually get uh, information right on the very edge of the event horizon? Oh, that's an old thing. Yeah, the, the idea that everything gets smeared onto the event horizon. Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah that, that's something that's <laughs> you been coming around well for a I am with it. So apparently it's an old thing. There was a new thing about the possibility of those things being pulled into a different universe or I guess parallel universe or something like that. It wasn't well phrased in the article I read, so I'm not entirely sure what they meant. But yeah, there was... It said something about dimensions, but I'm not sure if they know what they're talking about when they say the word dimension. And I'm going to assume they don't, because most people don't. Mm. But yeah, that was the new thing, was the idea that the matter just falls away from our set of dimensions into another set of dimensions, I guess. Oh, interesting. Okay, so... We have... We have this map that'll eventually happen. Someday. Surely we'll play a game someday. I mean, we could start now. Everything's set up. We can just go. Yeah. Everyone's, uh, everyone's ready. <laughs> Assuming that Forever Kloon, Akin, and Goofrog are all ready. Oh, Akin's not ready. Apparently their mic's dying. Oh. Or something. They're having communications problems. 
Oh, why am I playing this music? Oh. Why is that music even on the list? <sighs> Modern War Story. I do not want to have that on here. Ah, there we go. Okay, good. Now it's all up to date. So yes, Aquanim Goonfrog versus Forever and Clone with Skazi Knocks out versus Snuggle Base and, Ac and Anarchid over in the Losers pre-finals. Alright, so that should be up in... Now, actually. Really, I... Okay, good. We're good. Aquanim's ready. We're all good. Let's go! Great. Let's get the killing started. Go, go. That's some excitement. Yep. Boy, how do you play this map? I mean, with a layout like this in a 2v2 game, nonetheless, I mean, it's weird enough to be playing it with uh, two teams, but I mean, no one's... <laughs> you can't really prepare for this. This isn't like a standard game that you would play. No, but at the same of, time... Uh, at the same time, we do have to deal with the fact that or rather, there's an open area. There's a free right. expansion, and the players are going to fight for that first. So speed, but if you but if you overcommit your military to securing that third spot, you leave yourself open to a swift attack from uh, the direct route. That's where it's interesting. Interesting indeed. Can't wait to see. All right, so this is the map. I once I manage to get everything set up. That's off. That's on. All right. So yeah, it may be the case, but at the same time, this is a pretty small map. There isn't a lot going for it. I mean, there's there's not a lot of metal compared to a two v two map. This isn't too bad. And what is you know that's seriously a thing. Forever is gonna try to put a silo in the middle of the map. Yeah, let's see it happen. Uh, They're map? actually uh, talking about going wow. double recon commander and rushing the middle for that. This map is quite pretty. Uh, Sorry, I'm just being distracted by it. It's, it's pretty. Yeah, it is. A little tropical atoll, I guess. Yep. And appropriately enough, it is going to get nuked. <laughs> I'm a little surprised they're actually going for that early, though. Yeah, that's quite a rush. I mean, 1,200 mil, that's a, that's a big ass, plus another, what, five or six for the technique itself? Yeah. Oh, never mind. Okay, that's been either okay. abandoned or they were just saying, I'm planning on doing this at some point. Yeah, hopefully just to uh, take a look at the range and uh, let his teammate know. Good, good. I'm and glad he's hovers. not going to rush that. Google Frog finally went for Hovercraft. Oh, great. Yeah, I mean, this is definitely the map for it. Mm hmm. Certainly. Really, gunships from forever here. Yeah. Are they going to go for rapiers? going to go for. Nats and Comnap? Going for an idling factory at the moment. Map. Yeah, that's an interesting strategy. Not sure I agree with that one. I mean, it looked kind of imposing, I suppose, but... Okay, there we go. They're going for... That doesn't tell us anything. They're going for builders. Of course they <laughs> are. That's what you do. Although this map isn't that economically focused. I don't know. He might just be going for the fast expand. I would uh, not yeah, be too surprised see. to see this thing head out to the northeast. Well, that's the way to go, I would think. I mean, we have Clone going to the center. We have Forever going to the northeast, potentially. And, of course, there's all these center arms that could be taken as well. And it looks like G it looks like Re Recursion has a much better sea presence. As you can Hovercraft and Amphib, they're probably going to be in a better position to deal with anything in the water. Yep. Yeah, I'm not sure how Forever plans to capitalize on the advantage of having gunships. At this point, I don't think they plan on using them, but maybe. I See, mean, it might be worth building a couple just to force some AA, and then maybe maybe not focusing on gunships after that and trying to go for the silo quickly, but... I think that's what yeah, they're trying to do. The chat mentioned something about decoy, like air decoy, then go shields? Huh. Okay, well... I mean, that makes sense. It's actually just another crane coming up. Well, they're reclaiming. Moment. And if you look at the other ones, it's reclaiming water rocks. I see. Yeah. Oh, wow. Look at that. Those are pretty valuable, too. 
in a as a collection. Oh yeah, it's got to be easily a thousand of my metal. Like, oh wow. Yeah. Wow, there's there's a ton of reclaim here. I didn't notice that immediately. Well, so I that's guess. the advantage of choosing gunships for sure. Definitely an advantage. And yeah, this is random spawn location. But honestly, this map is radially symmetric, so it doesn't make much difference. Or very nearly radially symmetric. In terms of metal, it is. In terms of terrain, it's very nearly, so it's not that big of a deal. I doubt that the difference in the randomness is going to make that big of a difference. Like, it's probably yeah. below whatever noise floor of anything else. And yeah, there's the shields. The shields are coming up proxy in the center of the map. And Forever has announced that they are in the center of the map. That stinger is not going to be up in time. Or well, at least probably not. If Recursion goes in for the attack right now, Here that we stinger's go. Going to be Here we go. to assist the stinger. the stinger. That's definitely the right call. Yeah. Mean Machines does have the economic advantage, so they can definitely make use of that. These trees in the center, by the way, they obscure unit vision and uh, line of... Or, uh, I guess that's the same thing as line of sight. So not... Uh, units can't fire as often as yeah, they normally would inside of this thicket. There's like one... I think there's maybe this one quarter that, they can, that that stinger can fire on. Everything else is basically, if they fire on it, then everything's already hitting the solar collectors. Like It's it's already close yeah. enough that it's a big threat. Mm. Yeah, it's a sort of an unintuitive uh, feature of the center part of this map. Mm-hmm. Although, well, it looks like, despite the fact that Recursion has gone entirely for water-based things, that Clone's doing a much better job of actually messing with people on the water. I just have their scallops going around, tearing apart everything, like popping up out of the water, smashing something, popping back in. There's so much shoreline here for these scallops to take advantage of. I mean, it makes a lot of sense to me. It's a really good call, I think. I also I see one buoy traveling with this stuff. pack of scallops to help bust some pork, so this is a really nice force coming out from Clone, and it's headed the right direction too. This could be pretty dangerous if uh, Google Frog lets it build up for too long. Yeah, I think it's gonna happen. I'm just surprised. I mean, I was thinking this might happen, but I was just surprised that Recursion didn't do this as well. Because mm, if you think about yep. it, they have the power to do this. They just haven't been. So yeah, it looks like uh, if Clone takes too much control of this little, uh, I don't know what to call this, like a lagoon type area. But anyway, if Clone takes too much control of it, then Recursion is going to be relying on the mobility, maybe, of the hovercrafts to go around the secured area. Which is also a viable strategy. Well, that's, yeah, that's definitely easy enough. I mean, Google Falcon just is already scouting around with the dagger and wants to see what's going on because, of course, they want to know. Oh, oh. Penetrator. Pretty quick coming up from um, Google Frog. That doesn't surprise me. Google Frog, I mean, once it gets into the area where it's a bit more consolidated, they are going to go for the Penetrator. That's what they do. It's worth mentioning that this northeastern uh, starting position actually hasn't been expanded to yet. That's a good point. The center's been such a point of contention that no one's actually even thought about it from the looks of it. But we do see that Aquanim is slowly but surely heading over there. As is In Google that Frog. way. Mm -hmm. Yep. Yeah, because Forever was so concerned about Reclaim, they never actually went through and got Static Economy. They just went for all the Reclaim. So that's definitely a relatively safe way to go. Oh, wow. Look at this Thug Lob all up here in the center. Uh, it's hiding yeah. inside of these trees, and then the outlaw is actually damaging these LLTs. No, it's this not. Is brilliant. Oh, no, it was. What the heck? Where are the health bars? Okay, that's weird. My health bars are not showing up. F9, I think, might disable those. That's right. Thank you. I don't know why I hit, how I hit that. I must have... Yeah, whatever. Trying to disable menus. Okay, I missed that. But down goes that thicket, so so much for that. Still, not a bad strategy. Nice little call, and all that's left for the charge remains of these trees. Uh, I love it. But hey, it was worth a shot. And, well, at least that halberd scouts everything out before dying. Where's that's the other thing? As soon as something bumps into the trees, they're knocked over. Right. Which means the stinger is much more powerful now along here. So there is that. And Recursion has now secured that expansion we mentioned just a minute ago. Mm -hmm. It's uh, pr probably going to translate to a rather large advantage. Well, take the expansion, lose a commander. Ooh, Bit of a trade-off. Ouch. Yeah, definitely out of place there. And these movies are in a great position to clear out the rest of the center. 
Yeah, one defense turret at a time. That's very nice angle. Oh, plus a Blackton coming in. Probably eyeing down that Penetrator, I would imagine. That would there be the target go. of choice. Google Rocks and Manitou trying to worry about. And that Ooh. Penetrator nearly shot my camera. <laughs> of course, thankfully, the game's camera is not an in-game object, because that would be really weird if it was. And could you imagine if a unit actually happened to hit the center? Like, a projectile hit the center of the screen, and suddenly your camera control is lost. It drops to the ground and breaks. <laughs> and it's just... This little glass broken effect as you're looking from ground view. That would be unusual. That'd be awkward. Thankfully not a thing. But yeah, Forever's Commander's gonna go down, so a bit of revenge. Thanks to Halberds. Oh no, never mind, good jump! Getting out of the way. We didn't notice how many ducks were being built, did we? <laughs> no, no, wow. Yeah, ducks to the rescue here. Yep. Should point out that clones actually managed to take back that northeastern starting position. Starting to fortify it as well. Huge amphibious bot army for, here from Clone. This is uh, this is certainly a problem for Recursion. Clone doesn't know it, but he could certainly push up to the north and uh, clear out at least this first expansion. Yeah, there you're right there. I could. I don't know if they really have much of a problem dealing with everything. Honestly, at this point, the Penetrator thing is the only problem. Yeah. Oh everything wow! Look at the open. military value. Clone is at six thousand. Everyone else is at four uh, K or less. That, oh, I guess that some commanders went down though. Yeah, bear in mind. I actually kind of hope that with the new the new display, it will show commander separate from regular military, because that oh. is confusing. Yeah. But nonetheless, uh, clone really not having any issues here, marching straight towards recursion space. Well, a couple issues. I mean, recursion is giving the old call to try to stop them. No doubt, and that penetrator doing what it can to pick off these units on the way in here. But also in the northeast, trying to get that back. Ah, uh, there we go. Not probably going to be successful. That Stardust is a major problem. Major thorn on their side, and I think at this point, this is game. The Penetrator won't be able to finish off everything, especially not the yeah. ducks that are underwater right now. This is a pretty sizable GG ball. I agree. And that, so do they. And so does the Recursion. So we're going to be moving on to game two and Recursion's choice of map, which against this, this team might be Intersection, might be Avalanche. Probably not going to be CCR because... Clone and Forever are going to be able to win CCR. There's no doubt about that. Well, I'm not mad at that game at all. That was pretty interesting, actually. Yeah, I mean... I really like the action in the uh, trying to vie for the center there. Really interesting. It would have been neat to see if a missile silo was built, but it would have been a loss if they had. So that mm -hmm. works. Yep. All right, Indeed. so next game is going to be on a map of Google Frog and Acronym's choice. Whatever that may be. I wouldn't be too surprised to see Intersection again, or probably just a smaller map, anything along that vein. Probably the same thing applies here. I mean, Mean Machines uh, traditionally considered a more macro-oriented clan, and especially these two players in particular. Mm hmm Yeah, clone primarily. Forever, I'm honestly not that sure. I haven't really been able to pin down Forever style too strongly. You know, I, although I said that they're more macro-oriented players, Forever in particular, I know, has some pretty good micro-tricks that I've seen him pull off in the 1v1 mm -hmm. uh, context. So I can see that being an issue as well. At any rate, I'm going to need to have is... Oh, I see, Something Ophelia's pointing out the whole point of the Turnian map was to make rushes less possible. A hmm. point I disagree with. Yeah. Rushes are always possible. This is zero mm -hmm. K. You can have a rush in by 30 seconds. That's part of the game. That's part of the charm. And their land bridge is connecting all of the bases, too. Yeah, exactly. I mean, and it's really, really cheap to scout. Uh, so yeah. I'm not sure it would prevent rushes, but it is an interesting dynamic just having the third open space. Yeah, maps that avoid rushes are also maps that tend to get into slogs for the same reason. <laughs> a good point, too. Because usually maps that avoid rushes are ones that either have a ton of terrain in between, or they have, like, desert plateaus, for example, or there's large, like, Desert plateaus once again, so that's another that's a map that doesn't have a very easy setup for rushes, or CCR of course is kind of wonky that way. It's big but it's flat, and then it's another one. I suppose you can avoid rushes and ravage someone, defend them. Oh, red comet, interesting. Hmm. So they're kind of going half and half. Yeah. 
A little bit above. Yeah, not quite a you macro map, way. but definitely not, not a, not a micro rush map. map. No, no, not really, not at all. Unless they go for the northwest or southeast rush. You know, set up one of their players there and use the rush distance. Mm -hmm. Might see some hovercrafts this time. Probably. Last time I saw Google Frog on this map, they went hovers. So I could totally see that. That seems perfectly viable. Seen quite a bit of uh, light vehicle this tournament, haven't we? Yeah. Yeah, that's not surprising. I mean, light vehicle is a popular factory, and a lot of players like playing on these flat maps. Mm hmm. So I'm not surprised at all, especially for team games. Yeah, yeah, in particular. So it does not. It does not cause me any shock to see that happen. Oh, right, and we're on game two, which is on Red Comet. I wish they were playing a Red Comet 1.1, though. I think it looks better. But, oh well. We're never going to have good-looking maps in this game. <laughs> well, okay, we will. It's just not going to have necessarily good-looking maps that have been around for a while and just being updated. Good-looking maps in the new maps. Ah. Anyway... I have got it here. Good. Done. So, let's see. They're on the mean. Looks like they're on the western side. Persians on the eastern side. Is tanks that? from Clone. Hmm? Looks oh. like tanks from Clone. I like it. Tanks from Google Frog, too. Ah. Look at that. Tank light vehicle versus tank light vehicle in a Beautiful. relatively conservative way. Yeah. This looks pretty good. I like this setup. This should be an interesting game. Yeah, so we should yeah. be going now. I think I like tanks better in the uh, center starting position, the way Clone has it. I Having agree. The over... speed. Yeah, mm -hmm. exactly. The rush distance really makes up for that. Yeah, it is definitely something. It's something I could see being a bit of an issue for the recursion side, and they're already down one game. I mean, I'm not sure who's winning between the others, between the other two teams, but. I mean, obviously, whoever loses this fights them and turning in once again, and then whatever other maps to get back to grand finals. But at this point, we do have. Well, early scouting for everyone. Nice, good early darts. How is that going to work? Are they going to see everything? I mean, they impressively did last time, remember, on Common Catcher. Mm-hmm. That could work. Not that it helped them any, but, you know, this, they still saw everything. It was still worth it. Looks like at this point, though, they haven't, really. Oh, no, they've seen the Light Vehicle Factory. They have not seen the Heavy Tank Factory. They don't know exactly where they are, but I'm, I mean, there's only two places where it's going to be. Like, you know this map. It's going to be center or it's going to be northwest, and it's probably not northwest. Yep. Okay. Who the fuck doing pretty focused on this? This Kodachi harassment. How many do they have? I mean, two out so far. Switching to Banisher. Yeah, the two out so far... Doing quite well. Yeah, he's doing a really good job of applying pressure with them. However, Clone is going for the Panthers, which does counter them pretty directly. So mm, even though there are three... Although, oh nice! Goofa going to the north, which should... Oh, it's not going to take out the commander, though. Normally I disagree about putting the commander to the north, but given that this is a team game and that Forever's commander is over to the south expanding that way, in this case it makes sense. Because it basically stuffed this entire harassment attempt. Stuffed it Bet hard. it did. Mm -hmm. And got rid of the Kodachi too. That's... If the metal extractor dies, I suppose it might be almost worth it. Like donating 35 metal for that, but nope. That doesn't even die. Nothing even dies. Where's the panther? Okay, panther's almost done. Banisher just finishing up for Google Frog. Really early. I wonder what his plan is here. Probably Maybe just try 
yeah, expand here to this cluster of mixes to the north and try and prevent raiders from getting through. Also, it's probably a hard read in the Panther. Probably figured, well, I'm going Kodachi, they're yeah. going Panther, I should go Banisher in advance to deal with it. Yep, that's a good point. That, or light vehicles, the Scorchers. So you gotta deal with that too. All kinds of good reasons to build that Banisher. Definitely a position where I could say Google Frog, doesn't really matter what they do for the Banisher, the Banisher is a good idea. Assuming that they don't just have it kill itself. <laughs> Running into the enemy is always a bad idea. Dying is not recommended. Bit of a gambit here, I think, putting the Banisher so far to the south. That leaves Google Frog fairly undefended to the north. I think... There we go. Heading back that way now. I think they realize that there's not much that's going to come at them. I mean, the Panthers might be a bit of a threat. But otherwise, what else is there? Because the south... The south is a super juicy opening. Like, this... The southeast area, that's got... That's really juicy for setting it up for anything for me inside to come in. Whereas yeah, the north a good side... Point too. Okay, there's there are metal extractors. There's the commander, maybe. Mean doesn't know the commander's there. They're just kind of exploring around. So the banisher also throwing it down might make might convince the commanders further south. That south is really valuable. I mean, not anymore because well, they're gonna find out. But still, you know, they don't they didn't know before. Now they do. But they might have been convinced. Maybe. Yeah, and I can see the benefit of keeping that banisher centralized, uh, trying to respond to the swings by this raider force here. Yeah, uh, unfortunately, they, unfortunately going north. <laughs> yeah, I was just going to say, unfortunately, he's not uh, quite quick enough to pursue them to the north here. Ooh, boy, it all depends on whether these panthers want to dig in or not. Well, they're gonna have an easy time if they try going. Oh, they're in. right there, so close to spotting out that commander. Well, they know they're there. I mean, the, the Scorcher saw it. Forever Scorcher did see it. They know Should what's going on. Down to the south now, huh? Probably just being a bit ginger, trying to expand behind this before they overcommit to an assault. I would recommend more defending behind it because at this point they have no static defense really built up other than a couple sky, sky dusts. The south yeah. side is really well defended, but the north side, mm -hmm. if they lose those Panthers, they're open. True. And the Banisher has come up north. They had enough time to do that. This is going to be a bit of an issue. Oh, the Scorch is going to see the front door is wide open at the moment. Has, well, sort of wide open. Panther's coming in to, to close that up. Just in time. But yeah, good good rating there, though. And even if that doesn't happen, Akron still has to rebuild all those metal extractors. They haven't been rebuilding one in the center at the front door for a little while. And the Banisher, is it going to engage? Got half its health. It's not in the best position. I don't know if it wants to engage right now. Google Frog just sent another Panther Force. And it looks like Google Frog's got the Panther Force, Forever's got the Scorcher, Leveler Force, so that's help get rid of the Panthers. And Knoon going for the Reapers, starting up the Reaper Ball early. Here we go. The Reaper Ball engine is... Actually, yeah, it is Star Breaker. That's the second Reaper. First one's already going. Google Frog not responding in kind. Akron going for the Impaler. Google Frog going for the Pillager. Which does make sense, although kind of risky in terms of costs. But it is accurate, so I'll give it that. It does have that. Yeah, it's a tough call. I'm not sure which I prefer. With the defenses the way they are, I think actually Reaper would have been a better call. And really just one is all you need to sort of tank and then um, deal some damage to those point defenses. You can follow up with Panthers just fine behind a Reaper. Yeah, and you don't really need Goofrog, a Reaper ball at this stage uh, in the game. Goofrog needs to focus down that one weak panther. Take that out. There we ah, go. Stunned out one of them. Stunned the other. Get the other. Get the other. There we go. Really Not, the other one. Not quite one. close enough, though. So many weak panthers here, though. Yeah, it's just... <laughs> every shot just means a couple others being stunned, but no follow-ups. And it looks like Clone and Forever are getting into a commanding position right now with those Reapers. I mean, Forever not so much. Forever's just sort of holding the line on the south side, but Kloon is being intimidating over here. And that banisher is going to go down very rapidly. There we go. And the pillager not even going for it yet. Where's the pillager? Pillager's going for the... Going for the level... Oh, double... Oh, see, never mind. Leveler mirror here, not the pillager. Where's the pillager going off to? 
Ah, there it is. It's trying to get rid of a leveler too. Not sure why, but yeah. Ooh, nice shot. Not so nice follow-up shot, because it's dead. Okay, well that particular patch of ground is going to be completely destroyed. Feels like Clone has been a bit too passive here. He just went in and dealt a ton of damage. He doesn't really need to repair this Reaper, or maybe he does need to repair that one Reaper, but he doesn't need to hold up the rest of his forces for it. That's, I feel like some follow-up would be perfect here. That is Clone's thing, though. That's the one thing. Although, yeah, I, I agree, because that does leave them very much in the open for the Pillager. Because why not just go for that? It's right there. Although it looks there like, we go. Yeah, she's back out now. Just being maybe a bit uh, more cautious than I am, I guess. Well, Clone is a very cautious player. Like I said, it's how they play. They don't want to lose units. They don't have to. It's rare to see them rush in in a situation where they're not sure they can take it. Mm. And when they do, it usually is a reminder as to why they usually don't. Because it doesn't work out and they go, Oh yeah, right, yeah, I suppose I shouldn't have done that. Okay, I'll make sure not to do that in future. And they don't do that in future. And it's really hard to break them. On the other hand, we have Forever coming in here being the aggressive one and doing a very fine job of it too. Nice attack in here. Fortunately, that panther scaring them away, but if they can get those wolverines, that mm -hmm. should... Ooh, that panther's almost, all, almost dead. Nothing wrong with this at all. Did wow. I those caretakers? Uh, well, yep. all right. Took it out. Saw the too. air factory. That's a big deal. Saw the fusion oh, plant. Oh, here we go. Gonna close up all of these solar collectors. Oh, that's painful. Recursion's gonna lose easily 20 energy. If they can close up... Up... Down all the way through the southeast side, that should lock down recursion energy for now. Plus those metal extractors they're connected to. Mm hmm. I understand yep. recursion energy is not being locked down. What the heck? Oh, solar collectors apparently still gain energy when they're disabled. What? That doesn't make any sense. Oh. Huh. Yeah, it said disabled, but it's there still has the plus two energy. I think that's a bug. What the heck? It's definitely contrary to my understanding. Yeah, if whoever's like if Google Vlog, hopefully you watch the replay of this because that doesn't seem right. Or, or maybe just put an issue up, but I might not be able to be here. Yeah, put an issue up, Kane. If if I'm not here when the tournament's over, if you could please put an issue up, that would be great. Okay. Noted. Because I still have another hour or so. Unless I'm lucky about parking on where I'm going, but yeah, probably won't be. Yeah, this is... I think this is probably pretty close to it. Google Fox Commander about to go down. Oh, not quite! Not quite! It's being a strike gun saved its life. <laughs> but even then, this is just such a commanding area. Like, this this is it. Mean has this. I mean, it's a bit of a risk with Red Comet, because Red Comet does have a fairly strong micro flavor to it. I mean, it's... a it's a relatively small map, so you can micro your way through, but it is mm -hmm. still a very strong macro map. Once you get a consolidation phase, once the economy is right. built up, once overdrive is built up, it's just... That's huge. And that's it. Recursion goes down to losers' finals. And who will they fight? I honestly have no idea. And apparently yep, nope, neither nope. is Orphilius. Because Great. it hasn't been updated. Perfect. But yeah, that was that was a risk. I think a risk worth taking. Although I honestly would have expected them to go for something like Avalanche instead. Maybe they expected that on a map like Avalanche, the same thing would happen, but at smaller scale. Like Clone would just hole up and make it really difficult to go through. Yeah, and that's sort of been the recurring theme. We've seen, uh, you know, some stronger, more I guess we might say micro-oriented players going up against mean machines, but they hunker down and they expand behind it. And not, if you are if you're not able to penetrate uh, the armor early on, then once they hit that critical mass and the large eco advantage, there's really not much you can do about it. Mm-hmm. Well, it looks like the Skazi Yogg Snuggle Base Anarchid match. Did it finish? Well, I don't know. Maybe it did, but it's. Yeah, Anarchid's over here, so I'm assuming it's done. I don't know who won. Well, at any rate, kind of important.
it would be nice to know who won that. Okay, so at this point, yeah. Acronym and Google Frog go over to the Losers Finals. Forever and Clone go over to the Grand Finals. Of course, the big question, are we going to see a repeat of the last match? The answer is, I probably won't. <laughs> at least not until tomorrow or something or sometime when I cast it as... Oh no, tomorrow I'm busy too. I got a really busy oh. weekend. Well, that's alright. Okay, so forever is... Forever going is like, oh, come on. I gotta figure this out. I'm. I guess it's new thing for Orphelius to organize a commander. I mean, organize a tournament. <laughs> Darn it. Right. Ah, this is bad. I've got to drive. Oh. This may be the last you ever hear recorded my voice. <laughs> Cherish it, please. Okay, Skazi and Yogstoth were the ones who won against. Okay, so Snuggle Base and Acronym got. Sorry, Snuggle Base and Anarchid got fourth place. Now Skazi and Yogstoth fighting against Acronym and Google Frog. And that's going to be starting on Turnian. Best of three. All right. Yeah, I don't mind. I'll watch another Turnian game. Interested to see how this one goes. Well, the last one was pretty cool. I don't know why you're saying that. It's like, well, yeah, I guess I'll, I'll take it. <laughs> That's what they're giving. Oh, it's Sands of Time? What? No, it, it's Turnian. It's, yeah, semifinals and losers finals. Turnian. Yep. Although technically, it's not only losers finals, but also losers round two. Yeah, so. that's a fair point. <laughs> uh, but yeah, I'm pretty sure it should be turning on. <sighs> Whatever. I mean, it's more like when you get a situation where the where the turnout's lower than you expected for the number of rounds, just adjust the map list. Yeah. Please. So, is Yogg's not going to come in here or what? Oh, there's no unspec. Okay, whatever. They're in. They were good. We we're going to start. We will start this at some point. We are on Sands of Time. We are not on... What was that? Game... Hands of time. All right. <laughs> 